The new Asset Browser in Blender 3 and later allows you to build your own library of assets, such as 3D models, materials, rigs, animations, HDRIs, even geometry nodes, setups, and then you can just drag and drop these assets into any Blender scene. This is a game-changing feature. It will speed up your work in Blender, but it took me a while to start using it because I wasn't sure how it works or how to set it up. So in the next minute or so, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Asset Browser so that you don't have silly excuses like myself. And then we'll go even deeper into the details of the Asset System. So quick start guide. In Blender, expand the timeline and switch it to Asset Browser. In Blender 3.5 and later, you'll probably see some pre-existing example assets, but we want to add our own. For that, first we need a special assets folder, so go to Edit, Preferences, and then File Paths. Under Asset Libraries, you'll probably see an existing user library, which points to a location on your hard drive. Uh, so if that works for you, you can use that. Uh, personally, I'm going to add my own. I'll press the plus button here and go to the folder that I want to use. I can even create a folder here right from the Blender interface. And I'll call it My Assets. Enter it and press the Add Asset Library. And that added a new asset library location. Now, this is my special asset library folder. By pressing the plus button once more, I can create even more folders. But for now, let's stick to this one. So now I can open any file that contains something that I would like to turn into an asset. Here I have a base mesh that I might want to reuse often. So now I can open the asset library and then just right click on the object name in the outliner and choose mark as asset. And as soon as I do, you'll see it appear here in the library. So I can just drag this asset into my scene and I'll have another copy of this base mesh. So now if I save this file and start a new Blender scene, I will not find the base mesh in my assets. That is because we only created a local asset that is only available in that specific blend file. To make it into a global asset, we just have to save the file that contains the asset into our special assets folder. So I'll open the base mesh file again, go to file, save as, navigate to my assets folder and just save it in here. Now, if I open a new blend file, and look under my asset library, my base mesh will be listed and then I can drag and drop it into my scene. So this is now a global asset and it will be available to me in any Blender scene. Now I can keep adding assets and there are several ways to do so. I can go back to my asset file, which I already saved in my special folder, and I can just add another object and mark it as asset. And now if I save the file and go to a new file, my monkey will be in the asset library. I can start a new file, create a new object, save it and make sure that it is saved in my assets folder. Give it a name, mark the object as asset, save. And now if I go to a new file, the cone will be here as well. I can even save my asset blend files in a subfolder of my special folder. So for example, if I create another object, mark it as asset, and another common asset type is materials. So let's create some of those. I'll go here, create a new material, give it a, a color and some material settings. And then I can just right click on the material and mark as asset and it will appear in here. And let's create one more. So now if I go to save as, go to my assets folder and create a subfolder and save my asset there. I can then start a new blend file start my asset library and all of my assets that I saved will be there. So to make sure that an asset is a global asset, your blend file needs to be saved in the special assets folder or even in a subfolder. 
and it has to be marked as an asset. So now I can start dragging and dropping these files into the viewport. And if I switch to material preview, I can apply materials by just dragging and dropping them uh, from the asset browser onto objects in the viewport. Let's quickly go over the interface. Until now, we were always looking at our entire uh, collection of assets because this dropdown here is set to all. I can set it to current file, which will only show assets in the current file. This is most useful when you are in your asset blend file. So this will show me what I have in the current blend file. We can switch to essentials. And these are the assets that come prepackaged with Blender. Currently, we only have the hair assets, but in the future, you can expect even more types of assets. Then we have user library. That was the default library that was created by Blender that I didn't use. So uh, there will be nothing in there. It's not even set up. And then I have my assets and that will show me my own assets. Now, currently all of these assets are unassigned. You can organize them into folders or catalogs uh, as they're called in Blender. So just press the plus button here and that will create a new catalog. You can also create sub catalogs or subfolders by pressing the plus button next to the existing catalog. Then I can go to unassigned and I can start dragging and dropping assets into the folders. So for example, these are materials. The assets can only be organized in the file where they were created. So for example, the torus is part of this file, so I can drag and drop it into my models. But the monkey is part of another file, so I cannot drag and drop it in here. So I'm going to save this current file and then open some of my other assets. So here I can um, drag and drop my base human into the models, save my file, and then go to my other asset file and I can finally organize this, this file's asset. In this area you have some very useful options. You can change the size of the asset previews. You can search for assets by name. And you can filter assets by type. So if you only want to see materials, you can only leave materials or only objects or only node trees and so on. So this is the end of the quick start guide. I'm not sure how quick it was, but I think we covered some of the most important features of the asset browser. I hope you stay for the rest of the video because we will be covering more complex examples. I'll show you how to work with asset collections, how to deal with rigs, geometry nodes, setups, HDRI environments, and so on. Something that you'll probably want to do is to create an asset out of several objects, not just a single object. So let's go back to our asset blend file and I'm going to delete my monkey. It was just an example. If you have some objects in another Blender scene, an easy way to bring them into your asset scene is to simply select the objects and press Ctrl C, then go to your asset scene and press Ctrl and V and that will paste the copied data. So let's move this out of the way now and zoom in. And this consists of two objects, the face and eyes. And so maybe you want to keep these objects separate, but you want the whole thing to be a single asset. In that case, select both objects, press M and create a new collection. And then mark the collection itself as asset. I'm going to assign it to the models catalog, save my file and open a new blend file. Now, if I drop the base head into my new scene, you'll see this empty appear, and then we don't actually have access to both objects. If you press Ctrl and Z, that will actually remove the empty and it will give you your two objects. But that is just a workaround. It may actually be a bug in Blender. So here is how to do it properly. I'm going to undo and then drag and drop the head again, and then expand the add collection options. You could easily miss this menu. Uh, I wish there was a more intuitive way to do it, but uh, what you need to do is to just untick instance and that will give your uh, base meshes. You can zero out the location. Um, and now 
the head will not be in the center of the world because it will appear exactly where we put it in the asset scene. With single objects that is not a problem because um, the placement is based on the pivot point. Let's go back to the asset scene. So this human asset I can place literally anywhere in the scene and it won't be a problem. But with collections, if we want to control the placement of the final objects with precision, then you may want to place the objects exactly in the center of the world. So I can set x to 0 and also for the eyes, x0. Okay. Something else that is interesting is that if I add any object to this collection, the whole collection will be automatically updated. So let's just add um, a sphere like this. Uh, save our file, start a new file. We have our base head here. The thumbnail hasn't been updated. I'm going to talk about this in a second. But now if I, if I drop this into the scene, set location to zero and remove instance, I'll have my head exactly in the center of the world. And all objects in the collection were added to the scene. Now let's see why the uh, thumbnail hasn't been updated. Thumbnails and other interesting data about your asset can be seen if you click on the gear icon here. Shortcut is the N key. And now the data here will be grayed out. That is because we can only edit the data in the original asset file. So let's go back to our asset file. Okay, now if I click this base head and expand the options, I'll be able to edit the data here. To update the preview, I just need to click this button here and you'll see that the sphere was added to the preview. You can add important metadata about your asset. Unfortunately, this is only for information purposes. You cannot search by license, for example, which would be very useful in my opinion. I hope this becomes possible in the future. But right now we have tags which can be used for that. So if I add the license here, and other tags that may help me identify this asset, then I'll be able to use the search to find these tags. Now let's talk about creating custom thumbnails for your assets. By default, Blender just takes your asset and places the camera in the front and a little bit up and takes an automatic screenshot of it. And it seems to be using solid mode and color set to texture. So if you have any textures, they will show up in the interface. And a common problem is that it may render the wrong texture. Um, so here is another example that I have prepared. I'm just going to copy this object and paste it into my asset scene. And actually you'll see right away that um, some of the objects are showing the normal map rather than the diffuse. And now just let me place it into the main collection. And now if I mark it as asset, you'll see that some of the textures look wrong. So what you can do is go to shading and go to materials. Find a material that is uh, problematic and just select the base color texture. And when you do, the display will also change. Okay. And now I can go here and update the thumbnail and the textures will show up correctly. But it's still kind of limited because it only does it in shaded view. So you can actually click this folder icon here and choose any image file that you have, any JPEG or a PNG file that you have on your hard drive, you can use as a custom thumbnail. And I didn't find any guidelines as to the size and format of these images, but I believe a small JPEG is ideal. So if you want a custom thumbnail for, for this object, for example, um, you can render it or you can just quickly switch to material preview, isolate your object and use some sort of app that allows you to take a screenshot, for example, Windows snippet tool. And again, there are no proper guidelines for this, but personally, I would save this file in my asset library folder. Just create a thumbnail subfolder. I'm going to save this as JPEG. Now I can select this character, click on the browser icon, go to my thumbnails and select my character thumbnail. And now I have a custom thumbnail. 
We can also make rigged meshes, such as rigged characters, into reusable assets. So let's see how that works. Here I have a very simple rigged base mesh. So I'm going to select everything, press Ctrl C, and then go back to my asset scene and Ctrl V and paste it. And here is an interesting workaround. If I expand the hierarchy here and mark the mesh as asset without marking the rig as asset, let's do that and save the file, start a new file and just drag and drop this new asset that we created, you'll see that uh, the rig will come with it. That is because the rig is referenced in the armature modifier, which is on the mesh. So the rig becomes a dependency and so it comes with the mesh. But of course the right way to do this is to go back to your asset file, place the mesh and the rig into a new collection. And I'm going to clear the asset from the mesh, right click, clear asset, and then mark the um, collection as asset. Save it. Let's start a new file place our collection into the scene, remove instance and zero out the location. So that's it, very similar to object collections. So in a minute, I'm going to cover how to turn complex rigs into assets. But before that, let's cover the difference between appending and linking because that will become relevant. And at the same time, let's look at this setting here, which we haven't touched on yet. So if you click this, you'll see that you have the option to link, append, append and reuse data or follow preferences. So follow preferences is simply if you go to edit, preferences, file paths and select your asset library. Here you can set up the default import method and by default it is set up to append reuse data. So follow preferences means to just use this import method from the Blender preferences. Uh, but you can always override it by choosing another option. So let's see what the difference is. We have append and append gives you a full copy of your original data into your new scene. So if I pull this base mesh into the scene, I will have a full editable copy of this mesh in my new scene. Now let's say that the data of this mesh is about two megabytes. If I append another copy of this guy, then I'll be using four megabytes of data. One more, six megabytes, eight megabytes, and so on. So each new copy will add more and more data to our scene. Of course, the benefit of that is that I can edit any of these meshes individually. Right? Each object is a full copy of the original, so I can do whatever I like with it. Next, we have append reuse data. With this option, the first copy that I bring out will be a full copy. So it will bring two megabytes of data into my new scene. However, the next copy will be a linked copy of the original one. So it will add very little data to the scene. Okay, I can add another one. And again, that will add very, very little data. This can be seen here under um, data properties. You'll see that if I select any of these objects, they have the exact same name. If I change this name, the mesh here will change for the other ones as well. So this gives us a more optimized scene, but if I edit any of these objects, the other ones will be edited in the exact same way. So that can be a benefit, but it also could be a problem if you want to edit each object individually. And by the way, if we simply press Alt and D to duplicate an object, we have the same effect. We have a linked duplicate of our original mesh. Okay, and finally link, if I link the character into the scene, that will create a linked copy of this mesh directly from the source file. So it will add very little data to this new scene. However, um, you are actually unable to edit this mesh at all. You may be able to edit part of it using library overrides, but we are not going to go into that. So now you should understand the pending and linking. For simple meshes, I would usually just append them but with complex rigs, you may actually want to link them into your scene. So let's have an example. Here I have an example of a complex rig. This is the Judy rig that you can get from BlendSwap. And I have already edited this scene a little bit. 
I have placed everything that has to do with the rig in this Judy collection. So I have one separate collection with all the meshes, one with the rig. Uh, those are sub-collections for my main collection. There is a mesh cage which is used for deformations. It is not supposed to be seen, but I still included it as a sub-collection in another collection that holds all of the widgets. And these uh, collections that are not being rendered are have visibility disabled. So to make this into an asset, I'm going to go to save as, because this file is not saved in my special collection. I'm going to go to my asset, create a subfolder, and save it here. Now I'm going to right click on the main collection, which contains all of the other collections, and mark as asset. Now if I go to my unassigned collections, you'll see that it is here. So let's add another subcategory and call it rigs. And then I'm going to drag and drop my Judy rig into the rigs. And these I want to drop into the models uh, section, but I cannot do it right now because they're part of another file. So I'm going to do it later. So let's save and start a new scene. Now I have two options to bring this uh, rig into the scene. One is to use the append function. Just drag and drop it into scene, remove instance as before, and then zero out the location. And now we'll have full copy of this rig into our new scene. Okay, let's undo. The other option is to use linking, drag and drop the object into the scene, select everything, Alt G, Linked assets and rigs are not directly usable by default, so you have to right-click on the linked collection, go to Library, Override, Make, and choose Content. Now this rig will work as a linked rig. And working with linked data has some caveats. I'm going to make my own video about that. Peerig did a nice one recently, so I'm going to link to that. So we already covered material assets at the beginning in the quick start guide, but we only used very simple materials. Let's see a more complex example. This is a material that I got from Polyhaven and it has standard PBR textures. Currently the blend file and the textures are on my desktop. And first, uh, I definitely want to save the blend file into my assets folder. I created a subfolder, my materials, and let's save this as a general blend file for material assets. Now to mark the material as asset, I can right click here and mark as asset, or right click here and mark as asset, or here mark as asset. Um, basically anywhere where you see the name of the material, you can mark it as asset. So let's do it and let's switch this to asset library and you'll see that the asset is here. Uh, something interesting about the previews of materials is that they are based on this preview here. So if I switch to the special material thingy and I expand the end panel here, select the material and update the preview, it will be the same as here. And now the textures for this material are still on the desktop. I could bring them to my asset folder and I'll probably have to update the textures. So in my opinion, the easiest way to deal with this is to just go to File, External Data and Pack Resources. So that will tell us that some HDR file wasn't found, but that is okay. We have the material textures and that is enough. So here I'm going to add this to my materials and I can keep adding more materials in the same way. Now I'm going to save this scene, open a new one, create an object and I can just drag and drop this new material onto it. And the material will be applied. Something else that you may want to save as an asset are HDRI environment maps. Blender does not treat textures and images as assets, so you cannot save the HDR image itself but you can make the so-called world shaders into an asset. So in this scene, 
if I go into the shader editor and switch to world, you'll see that I have an environment texture with a very simple mapping setup so that I can rotate it. And I have another one. So I can right click here and mark them as asset. But before that, just like with the materials, you may want to go to file, external data and pack resources. So whenever you're dealing with images within uh, these files that you want to use as assets, that would be my preferred workflow. So next, of course, I want to save this file within my assets folder. So file, save as, and go to my assets. I can create a subfolder for worlds. So the scene is ready, so I can just right click and mark as asset. And then I'll switch to the other environment that I have and mark it as asset as well. I can go to the asset browser and I have to go to um, my assets and then I'll be able to add catalogs. And then I can drag and drop these uh, environment textures into my world's catalog. The automatic thumbnails are not great, so you may want to go to the uh, website where it got the HDRIs and take a screenshot and create your custom thumbnail. But with that, if I save this file and create a new one, let's make sure that I'm rendering in uh, cycles with the GPU. And now if I render the scene, I can just go to my worlds and drag and drop a world and that will start lighting my scene. You can also make entire geometry nodes setups into assets, and that can be very powerful because geometry nodes can create really cool additional functionality. And there are a lot of setups that you can just download for free. The problem is that I download them and then I forget about them, but if I have them as an asset, I may actually end up using them more. Uh, so this is the Ivy generator that I got from Gumroad. Very cool stuff. And again, because it has some sort of textures, I'll probably want to pack the external data again, then save this file uh, into my asset folder. Right click on the name of the geometry nodes setup, mark it as asset. Let's also organize things. I'll go to the asset browser, my assets, create a new catalog for geo nodes and drag and drop my IV into it. Here I found some random IV image on the internet, so I'm going to save it to my assets folder, thumbnails. Geometry nodes never generate a preview, so, um, so you have to set your own thumbnail. And there we have it. Now I'm going to save this scene, open a new one, open my asset browser, I can drag and drop this IV onto this model. And then you have to know how this setup works. So here I'm going to create a new object, um, place it into a collection and use this collection as the target. So from now on, I'll be able to easily access this IV generator at any time by just going to my geometry nodes catalog. There are a lot of geometry node setups out there, uh, so this can open a lot of possibilities for you to really quickly build scenes within Blender. By the way, all of the hair assets that come prepackaged with Blender 3.5 are geometry nodes. A quick note about animation assets or action assets. If you have any action in your scene, you can right click in the action editor and mark it as asset. Also here in the outliner, uh, if you see the name of the action, you can right click and mark as asset. And it will be marked as asset. Um, you'll find it in the asset library. However, this here is Blender 3.5, the newest stable release. And currently there is no way to actually apply these actions that we save in the asset library to a character or to an object. I'm sure that will become possible in future versions of Blender and I'll cover this feature when it's available. Something that you can do already is to store and reuse poses. For that, you need to enable a separate add-on. It is part of Blender, but it may not be enabled by default. So go to your add-ons and search for pose and enable the pose library.
when you do, you should be able to go to the asset library. And uh, by the way, ignore these four asset menus. Uh, there seems to be a little bug currently in Blender, but you can create a pose asset and you'll be able to reuse it on other rigs that use the same bone structure and bone names. But the pose library is uh, something that deserves a separate video, so I'll probably make one in the near future. We are almost done with the overview of the asset browser. I just want to mention a cool little feature. So we can drag and drop objects into the scene. If you drag and drop objects onto existing objects, you'll see that the drag and drop preview kind of aligns to your object. So I can drop this cone onto the box. So in most cases, that is really cool. Uh, sometimes if you have a busy scene with lots of objects that may not be desirable. So what you could do is just press Alt R to reset the rotation and then align it. But I kind of wish there were more options for the drag and drop. And a quick word about organizing your assets, which we already covered. I just wanted to emphasize it. Um, if I go to my asset folder, you can see that I have um, several blend files within my main folder, then some additional subfolders, and they can contain one or many blend files. So you have full freedom to organize your blend files in any way that you like within this asset folder. And then you have your catalogs, which have a similar folder structure, but they are not related to this um, folder structure on your hard drive. So again, this gives you full freedom to organize your assets exactly as you want within Blender. Hope you learned something. Um, if you liked the video, click like, subscribe, and consider supporting CG Dive on Patreon or Gumroad.